when we think about micro factories, when we think about what what's the purpose behind that ability to do discovery and inventions, it's really saying we need to be able to think laterally. We can't just assume that everything is about growing that scalability and talking about, oh, let's scale up. But what if we could scale out? We could actually deliver a whole range of decentralized solutions, micro factories across the country to be able to convert our waste materials into value-added materials and products. I'm Veena Sahajwala, I'm Professor and Director of Smart Center at UNSW, so at Sustainable Materials Research and Technology Center. It's such a privilege to be able to take your science uh, out into community, out to industries, and to actually have an impact in a way that it's never been done before. So in the work I do with recycling, particularly pioneering micro-recycling science, to be able to bring that not only from a scientific context into our communities, but also more importantly, to be able to show how that science actually translates into practical outcomes. Think about all of those complex products that are there, for example, in our electronic devices. You know, and just reflect for a moment that, you know, a, a printed circuit board, for instance, you know, you've got so many different kinds of materials on there. How do you then think about recycling metal and non-metal? Yeah, I mean, that's just one example of how complex you know, overarching systems can be. You look at something like a tire and you go, whoa, wait, okay, a tire is just rubber, isn't it? So, you know, really what else can you do with it? But if you actually reflect for a moment that that complex structure, which is that molecule that is there, and all this amazing resource, which is a collection of different kinds of elements like carbon and hydrogen, why would we not see that whole process of taking an end-of-life rubber tire as a resource in a way that it becomes a feedstock for carbon and hydrogen. It's connecting the dots between all the way down at the micro level. So this is what I like to call molecular circularity. You know, you're not just talking circular economy, you're actually talking molecular circularity. It makes sense from an environmental point of view. And I think it's it's got to be the Australian narrative. You know, we've got to be able to show to the world that we're pioneering, you know, some of these endeavors, which are not just about thinking about recycling and isolation, but it's, it's coupling that and aligning that with manufacturing and remanufacturing. The fabulous example is our plastic filaments micro factory uh, set up in Lane Cove. And, and here's another case in point where that plastic that came from the IT sector, um, which is typically considered, you know, really difficult to recycle, we've shown that we can indeed convert that plastic into, into making plastic filaments in our micro factory. And of course, you know, we know that plastic filaments then become a feedstock for 3D printing. So the fact that, you know, Australia could be doing 3D printing uh, using 100% recycled filaments uh, that have been made, you know, right here in Sydney uh, is is such a cool thing to have. But you know, we don't want to stop there. Our industry partner wants to take these micro factories, for example, to make uh, plastic filaments and other products, um, you know, to the rest of the country. So the fact that when we think about e-waste, we we should think. Um, not just metals, of course, that's an important part of what's there in our electronic devices. But sometimes we often forget that those old printers, you know, all that casing is, is all plastic. We're really talking about that mindset that says, you know, can we actually develop pioneering technologies such as micro factories so that they are fit for purpose? And fit for purpose means, you know, what what is that purpose here? We need to have both. Yes, economies of scale, but in this instance, what we can also achieve is economies of purpose. And economies of purpose will now get us to start to think about that entire supply chain. I, I would love to be able to tell more of these stories uh, to you know, young people who might be thinking about engineering, that there is so much you do as an engineer when you get out there, and of course, you know, people in, in our communities 
uh, are so welcoming uh, to innovative ideas and solutions where you can actually talk about uh, the huge impact that you can have.